right textbooks out open to page 21. Want to look at some uh, more algebraic representation. Um, had a little bit of this on the quiz yesterday, and uh, want to look at some more here. So page 21, number seven, and uh, go ahead and read that problem for us if you would, Maddie. Number seven, page 21. All right, so that's a lot of books for two girls to own. But anyway, they've got a lot of books. I don't know, maybe they have like series or something. There were some uh, books my wife had said she had when she was a little girl, the Mandy series or something like that. I don't know, Maddie, if you're familiar with that. But anyway, uh, some kids, you know, Hardy Boys. Um, I didn't have a bunch. I read all of them because the library had them all when I was growing up. But uh, anyway, they've got a lot of books. Together, they have a total of 50 books. Sue, it says, has X books. What was my encouragement on a problem like this to figure out what to do? Gavin? No, no, no. What was my encouragement to help you understand what to do? It says that Sue has X books. Well, that doesn't help because my brain doesn't think in terms of X books. Brecken helped her. What should we do? Make up a number. Okay, Brecken, how many books does Sue have? Five. Sue has five books. If that's true, how many does Tessa have? Forty-five. Forty-five. All right. Back to you, Gavin. Pick a different number. How many books does Sue have? One book. How many does Tessa have? Forty-nine. All right. So if we know they have fifty. And then we also know that Sue has X. What do we keep doing with these two numbers to get that one? Gavin? We're adding 50 plus 5 equals 45, and 50 plus 1 equals 49? No. No, we're not. What are we doing? So we're subtracting, right? We're taking the 50 books they have together. And we're subtracting however many Sue has. If Sue has five, we subtract five to get 45. Sue has one, she doesn't read a lot. Uh, we subtract one from 50 to get 49. So if Sue has X, Gavin, how many books does Tessa have? No. Otherwise, five and five would match, or one and one would match. So X and X would match, no. What did you just say we did with the 50 and the 5 to get 45? We subtracted. So what should we do with the x? Do the same thing. So what do we get? No, I help them. 50 minus 5. 50 minus 1. 50 minus x. Here's something where you can jot down in your notes. If you're ever given a total. If you're ever given a total, one of the two unknowns in the problem could be an x. The other will always be the total minus x. If you're ever given a total of two things, one of them could be x, since we wouldn't know it, but the other would be that total minus x. That's a memorized fact if your brain works better with memorized facts. I like figuring it out logically. Well, what would I do if Tetsu had 17 books? That's a hard number to work with. We subtract the 17 and get 33 books, right? We subtract whatever Sue has, okay? So if Sue has x, 50 minus x. Number eight, read that for us if you would, Noah. Plank, okay, so a large piece of wood. That represents the large piece of wood. It is 10 feet in length. But we don't want a 10 foot in length plank. We're gonna cut it in pieces. That's a cut. One piece is um, X feet long, however long that is. Well, once again, let's make up a number here. Noah, two feet, okay? If this piece is two feet, how big is the remaining piece? It must be eight feet. Noah, how did you get eight feet? So, not 10 from two, two from 10, right? You said 10 minus two, and it gave you an eight. Gavin, back to you. If I've got a 10 foot long board, and the first piece is X feet, how long is the other piece? Very 
we go. The whole length minus however big this piece is leaves us with this remaining or remainder piece, if you will. 10 minus x feet. How many thinking? 10 minus x there. Let's look down at number 9. And uh, Brecken, read that for us. Mason Hire works for two years to go white water for their dad. His pay was $75 for each day. It rained and one twenty-five for each day that it did not rain. Assuming x is the number of rainy days, answer the following question. All right, so to get the background here, why would they pay him less on rainy days? Because nobody's going whitewater rafting on rainy days. But it's not his fault it rained. He's still there. Maybe he's cleaning the rafts. Maybe he's doing inventory, whatever. But he's not out there risking life and limb with inexperienced morons who don't know what they're doing. Okay, so they pay him 75 bucks those days. But if he's actually going out on the water with inexperienced morons who don't know what they're doing, risking life and limb, uh, then they pay him a little bit more for, you know, hazard pay, you might call it. Okay, so how many days did he work total? Brecken? He worked a total of 15 days. Of those days, it says letter A, uh, excuse me, before we get to letter A, X is the number of rainy days. So of the 15 days he worked, some of them were rainy and some of them were not rainy. That doesn't necessarily mean sunny because it could have been cloudy. But anyway, rainy days and not rainy days. X days were rainy. How would I represent the number of days that were not rainy days, Brecken? Good. The total number of days he worked minus whatever days were rainy leaves you with the days that were not rainy. Questions on letter A. Read letter B for me, if you would, Noah. In terms of X time, it's the way to make the days that are rainy. All right. So every rainy day, he received how much money? Seventy-five dollars, right? So if he works one rainy day, he gets seventy-five dollars. If he works two rainy days, that's There we go, bright boy. $150. How did you get that? He said 75 plus 75. Let's say he works six rainy days. 75 bucks a day. He works six days. Oh. What's the fast way to do this? The best way is multiply, right? However many rainy days there were times 75. But he worked X rainy days. How much money did he get for rainy days? 75 times x. I'm going to think in the same thing Noah said. This is the money that he's going to earn on rainy days. What about um, not rainy days? Again, how much does he get each not rainy day, Maddie? 125. Okay. How many not rainy days did he work? This is viewed as a single value, a single number in a sense, right? It's just not a number. How can I make it look like a single number, Maddie? No, but that would change what it means. It means 15 minus x. How do I make it one altogether? Put it in parentheses. So if I put it in parentheses, now I'm looking at this as a single value. We said every not rainy day you make how much money? 125. Okay, so if you work three not rainy days, how much is that? We have not practiced the mental math a whole lot. Okay. Just working it out on paper. 375. 375. How did you get that? Three. Multiply. Okay, so if instead of three not rainy days, it's 50 minus x not rainy days, 125 bucks a day, how much money does he get for the not rainy days? That's every rainy day. How much for all the not rainy days? There we go. And remember, for multiplication, you just run it together. The 125 up against the quantity, 15 minus x. How many thinking that for the amount of money he makes on not rainy days? All right. Look at letter D. In terms of x, what was Nathan's total pay? He got this much on days it rained, total. He got this much on, for all the days it didn't rain. But how much did he get over the entire 15 days? Volunteer, what do you think we would need to do? I think your hand was up just a hair before Noah's. Add them together. So we would say that all together, he made this much 
Money. Make sense? Do you see how to think through a problem like this? Look at number 10. Read that for us now, if you would. Gavin. Uh, yeah, a little louder. Rigor. Rigor. That's the guy who actually helps people get into the parachute and make sure all the belts and clasps and hooks are uh, all are fastened properly so people don't die. Okay, keep going. All right, letter A, in terms of X, how many days did it not rain? At your seats, write it down in your book. How many days did it not rain if it did rain X days? All right, letter B, how much money did he make on rainy days? How much money did he make on rainy days? Letter C, how much did he make on not rainy days? How much did he make on not rainy days? And letter D, how much did he make total? How much did he make total? How we did here. Letter A. How many days did it not rain? Noah. 23 minus X. Total days work minus the X rainy days. Letter B. How much money was he paid for rainy days? Brecken. 120. 120X. Letter C. How much was Joe paid for non rainy days? Gavin. Good. 200 times the quantity. 23 minus X. Letter D. What was Joe's total pay? Maddie. Very good. Can we get all four answers correct? All right, any questions on that? Starting to figure out how to think algebraically. Going to keep working on it. Again, today kind of being a, a work on this kind of thing. Uh, turn the page. On uh, numbers 11 through 14, they're giving you a little box here. They've given you a phrase in words. They want you to translate it to algebra. Then they've given you values to evaluate. They want you to figure out the evaluation. Complete that chart for numbers 11 through 14 at the top of page 22. Take about three minutes.
shows you on the screen. And it's the ANSI title back there, so they used to name my and she jerks around and stuff. They're usually handled by a professional, not me. <laughs> Maddie's finished. Thirty seconds more. together. Number 11, how do we write <coughs> 3 squared minus 4y? Gavin? <laughs> how should we have written 3 squared minus 4y? Yeah, I mean, it, it really couldn't have been any easier. They literally spelled out exactly what to write, as long as you read it carefully. So, if y has a value of 2, what's the evaluation? We better go to bracket because Gavin ain't got it. y is minus 3 is 3 squared minus 4 times 2. Good. Where 3 squared is? 3, three squared is nine. 9. There we go. And 4 times 2? 8. So, when you take 9 minus 8, you get 1, one is our evaluation. Number 12. X cubed less than 9X. This one took a little bit more thought. How would we write this, uh, Noah? 9X minus 3. Good, 9X minus X cubed. And if X has a value of 2, what's the evaluation, Maddie? 18. Ooh, it's not 18, Noah. <laughs> Okay, evaluation means you plug in the numbers and solve it. So if x is 2, now this part's 18. Maybe that's what you meant, Maddie. 9 times 2 is 18. What about the 2 cubed, Maddie? 8. eight. So 18 minus 8. Ten. So the evaluation is 10. All right, number 13. The product of 2 and x squared increased by the square of y. Um, Birkin, how did you represent this? 2x squared minus 4y squared. Good. 2x squared plus y squared is correct given a value of x being 2 and y being 4. What did you get for the evaluation? Let's go back to Gavin. 24 is correct. Number 14, the square of the sum of 2m and n. Hmm, what do you have here, Maddie? I'm sorry? Okay, that's the evaluation. What did you get for the representation, first of all? Well, like, what did you write in the in the second column where it says algebra? Oh, 2m plus n. <laughs> 2m plus n? Yeah. Okay, that's the sum of 2m and n, but it said it wanted the square of the sum of 2m and n. How would I show the square of this sum? 2x plus 2. And 3 is 2 and 8. There we go. Uh, it put in parentheses and put a little squared outside or a raised uh, exponent of 2 there. Um, how many had all the algebra correct for each of these? You had the algebra correct for each of them. Was your only mistake you just forgot the four in the first one? And the nine in the second one. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so uh, the evaluations are going to be off then. Questions on this? Questions on this? All right. Uh, let's go quickly review some things we talked about in our last lesson where we talked about how we classify different numbers. And we said that all numbers can be classified into one of two broad categories. We have what we call real numbers, and we have what are called imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers doesn't mean you left the answer blank. You're like, no, I had five. You just can't see it. It's an imaginary number. No, that's not what it means. We'll talk about those more in Algebra 2. So we're going to focus our discussion then just on the real numbers. And we said real numbers can be broken into two broad categories also. One way in which numbers could be written, mo many numbers could be written, is if they could be written as a uh, fraction in some way, shape, or form. There's a lot of ways in which numbers could be turned into fractions very creatively. 
Well, any number that could be written as a fraction, bracket, we call a rational. rational number. The root word here, remember, being ratio, which is a fraction. So if you can make it a fraction in some way, shape, or form, it's rational. What if it can't be made into a fraction, Noah? Irrational. What, are the, what types of numbers did I say would be irrational values? Gavin? Pi would be irrational. Why is pi irrational, though? There's something you learned about pi which tells us why it's irrational. And it never ends, it never repeats. So remember, irrational values are non terminating. That's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. Uh, what other kinds of things are going to be like pi and that they're going to be non-terminating, non-repeating decimals? Maddie? Point six repeating. I'm sorry? Point six repeating. Well, point six repeating is a repeating decimal. In fact, point six repeating could be written as two-thirds, which is a fraction. So, no, point six repeating would be rational. the square root of three, okay? It doesn't come out evenly. So any root that doesn't work out evenly will end up being a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So any root of anything that doesn't come out evenly, if he'd said square root of four, well, that would be two, which could be two over one, which would be a fraction, which would be rational, right? But roots that don't come out evenly are irrational. Roots that do come out evenly, rational. Fractions, rational. Uh, terminating decimals, rational. Whole numbers. Rational, even negatives of some of these, rational. Now, with rational numbers, though, we broke those down into um, what I call the uglies. What, what, what kind of things did I refer to as ugly? Um, Gavin? Fractions and decimals, right? I, we don't like fractions. We don't like decimals. So uh, those are ugly numbers. So basically, if it's not a fraction or decimal, though it could be made a fraction or decimal, right? Uh, six could be put over one. Right now, it's a fraction. Um, you know, negative eight could be, could be put over one. But they're not actually fractions, right? If they're not actually fractions or decimals, we refer to them as being, Noah, integers. Nice, easy numbers. Though they may be positive, they may be negative, so we call those signed numbers. And there's one number that doesn't have a sign that is an integer. The only unsigned number. Zero, right? So integers include your positives, your negatives, your zeros, but no fractions or decimals, right? So 0.6 repeating, that's a decimal, that's ugly. Uh, negative 3 fifths, that's a decimal, that, or that's a fraction, that's ugly. Negative 0.74, that's a decimal, that's ugly. But 6, negative 8, square root of 4, we'd have to write it as a 2 first, but then it would be an integer. Integers, though, uh, could be broken down into simpler things where we would say, well, let's take all the negatives, because some people don't like negatives, and let's throw those in one category, and let's just keep 0 and positives. What numbers are just 0 and all the positives? Gavin? Whole numbers. Whole numbers. Whole numbers. That's just zero and positive values. And for that matter, if you wanted to kick zero out, then we've got another group of numbers, Maddie, called just the positive. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, but but not zero. Anyone? Reckon? Counting. Counting numbers. There's another term for it. Natural numbers. But I would take counting numbers. Natural numbers, not zero, okay? So not zero, just the positives. Uh, one, two, three, four, and so forth. Okay, so we want to make sure we know those terms. We're not going to use them a lot, though there was one term I told you we are going to use fairly frequently. Which term was that, Gavin? One of these types of numbers I said you're going to hear often. Anyone? Just call it out. Integer. Right, because there's a lot of times where I'll tell you the answer you're going to get is a nice, easy number, but the way I'll say that is you're going to get an integer. Okay, so uh, you like that when you when you hear that, it's not like that's not scary. No, that's very good news because it means you don't have to worry about getting some weird fraction or decimal or something. All right, turn back to page 20, and at the end of last hour we were working on uh, 
doing some different things with fractions. One of those things we were doing was reducing fractions. Remember, you want to find the number that's in the numerator and in the denominator and divide it out of each. Just do two of these, number 22 and 23 on page 20. Number 22 and number 23. Take about a minute or so to reduce these. Eighteen twenty-four should be pretty easy. Maddie, what large number is in both 18 and 24? Not huge, but... You just did it by two? Well, there's a bigger number than two we could use. Do you see it? Well, we could use three, but if you could use two or three, you could use six. I would take the six out of both of these. They're both on my six times tables that we memorized when we were in... Uh, third grade, but uh, we divided both by six. What should we have ended up with, Maddie? Three fourths. Three fourths. Now, could you have divided by two to get nine twelfths? Yes, then you would divide by the three to get the three fourths, but easier to just divide the six out. The next one, though, I mean, I those weren't on my times tables when I was a kid. I'm assuming they weren't on yours either, unless we got really advanced. Okay. But I can see they're both even numbers at least, right? So I would start, if you don't know where to start, like here, Okay, I see the six right away, okay? <laughs> Hopefully you did, Maddie didn't, but you know, here, I, uh, let's just take the two out. What do we get if we divide 192 by two, anyone? Hold up. 96. And then 560, when you divide the two out, gives you 280. At this point, I notice they're still even. So, let's take another two out, because again, these still are not on my times tables from when I was a kid. So, uh, somebody else, 96 divided by two. 48, and um, 280 divided by 2? 140. And then, lo and behold, I realized these are still on my two times tables. Now, if I wanted to, I also noticed I can divide a 4 from this. If you remember your divisibility rule, the last two digits are divisible by 4, so the number is. Maybe we could try dividing a 4 out at this point, because I actually see a divisibility rule other than 2. Well, 48 divided by 4 is pretty straightforward. 12. Let's see, 4 goes into 14 three times. How many left over? Two left over, okay. And 4 goes into 20 five times. All right, now they're not even, so I can't divide a 2. What about a 3? 5? No, there's really nothing else that'll divide. I'm trying to remember 12 35ths. Did anyone get 12 35ths? Good, several of you did. All right, questions on that. Any questions on reducing fractions? Wrecking the video? All right, uh, drop down to number 30 and 31, where we're turning fractions into decimals. And remember, we said if you don't have it memorized, which 30 and 31 you didn't memorize, you can just divide. Remember that fraction bar means divide. Do 30 and 31, turning those fractions into decimals.
divide, the division counts with the dividend. The denominator becomes the divisor. Point five eight three with the three repeating here. You didn't have to write the second three if you saw it was going to repeat earlier, but point five eight three at some point would have bar over one of the threes. Good to go. Looking at this one here, how many times does um, three go into eleven, class? Three times. So that means thirty-two should go into one hundred ten. Three times. Three times thirty-two is ninety-six. We'll subtract that. will give us a fourteen. Let's bring down the zero. Well, if thirty-two goes in. Three times to 110, then into 140, it should go in four times. And four times the 32 should give us 128. We'll subtract it 100, or 12, bring down to 0, 120. Well, 4 is 128, so that doesn't fit, so it's got to be 3 again, okay? And that's going to give us another 96. And when we subtract, that's going to give us a, a 24. And we bring down a 0. And um, 3 goes into 24 how many times? Eight exactly, but this isn't a 30, it's a 32, so eight's not going to fit, is it? So we'll have to do a seven. Seven times two, 14 carry the one, seven times three plus one, 22. We subtract, get a 16, <clears throat> I'm running out of room, bring down a zero. Um, how many times three go into 16? That's a 16 down there. Five, Five right? And when you multiply, you get exactly 160, so this decimal doesn't repeat, it actually ends. Which, of course, a fraction or a rational value should be either a repeating or a terminating decimal. How many got? 0.34375 for this answer. Ooh, okay, we've got to work on some basic math skills. We were doing this in sixth grade. Okay, so got to work on our skills here. All right, go ahead and put your books aside. And I want to continue working on algebraic representation. So remember I gave you a big page of algebraic representation exercises a couple of days ago, a couple of classes ago. Well, I've got another page of algebraic representation exercises for you. We go to round two as we grab one page, two few. Here you go. I do have enough for you. All right. And uh, we're going to work our way through the even problems for now. We're running down to about 10 minutes left in class. So we're just going to do the even problems. Uh, number two, go ahead and read it for us if you would. Reckon. Rachel was two years old. How old was she seven years ago? How old will she be soon? All right. What do you think we would need to do to figure 
out how old she was seven years ago. What do you think, Bryson? Very good. Subtract seven. C minus seven. What about uh, in ten years? What do you think? Yeah, 10 years from now, she'll be 10 years older, 10 more years old. So C plus 10, you could write right on the paper if you'd like. C plus 10. How many think in the same things Brecken said? Any questions on those? All right, number four. Uh, four times as many boys as girls in a particular class. N girls, how many boys? Gavin, what do you think? 4N. Four times as many would be 4N. How many think in the same thing Gavin said? Any questions on that one? Number six, ooh, this is a fun one. The difference between two numbers is two. If S is the smaller number, represent the larger number. Hmm. Here's a good op opportunity to think of two actual numbers that have a difference of two. Maddie, what do you think? Give me two numbers that have a difference of two. Four and two. Four and two. So two and four. We'll list them in that order, okay? Now, uh, give me another set of two numbers that have a difference of two. Noah? Eight and three and five. Okay. Give me some bigger numbers that have a difference of two. Brecken. Eight, Eight and ten. All right. Now, it gives us that S is the smaller number. What we need to do is figure out the larger number. Well, class... What do we keep doing to go from smaller to larger every time? What do we do? Add two. So what are we going to do here? Add two. So what's the larger number? S plus two. S plus two. There we go. Again, do you see how thinking of actual numbers can enable you to figure out problems where you've never seen one like this before? That's usually the time you need to pull out some numbers, but you can figure it out. Does that make sense? Look at number eight. Um, if y is one part of the number 51, represent the other part. Well, we can think of actual parts of 51. What if one part of 51 is 50? What's the other part, class? One. What if one part is 10? What's the other part? Sorry. 41. If one part is uh, 21, what's the other part? 30. So if one part is y, what's the other part? So I took 50. I subtracted 51. What? Good. 51, the number we start with, minus whatever this was, always equal this. So it's going to be the same here. 51 minus y, well, unfortunately, you don't know what that is. So you just have to leave it as 51 minus y. How many think in the same thing Gavin said? Well, notice once again, like we saw earlier in the hour, you're given a total thing. You're given one part. The other part is the total minus the x, or in this case, the y. Look at number 10. Um, Jackson is j years old. His father is three times as old. Represent his father's age right now. Maddie? 3J. Three 3J. Three Dad is 3J. So uh, let's uh, get this down so we can keep up because this problem just keeps going and going. So Jackson is J, and uh, his dad is 3J. All right? Now it says represent Jackson's age six years ago. What do you think, Gavin? J minus 6. That's 6 years ago. How many are thinking the same thing Gavin said? What about dad's age in 5 years, Noah? 3J, his age now, plus 5. He's only 5 years older than that in 5 years. Here's the fun one. What about the sum of their ages in 8 years? The sum of their ages in 8 years. Years. You volunteer. You're the brave soul. There are no brave souls. Oh, Gavin is a brave soul. Okay, Gavin. The sum of their ages in eight years. Alright, so 
I was expecting an answer like that. You said the sum of their ages would be j plus 3j, and you added 8. But think about it. Each of them is going to be 8 years old, right? So in 8 years, Jackson is j plus 8, and Dad is 3j plus 8. So when I add their ages together, it, there is a j plus 3j, but not plus 8. Plus 8 plus 8, or plus... What's 2 times 8? 16, right? We could, in fact, say 4j if we added the j and the 3j, and 8 plus 8 is 16 if we wanted to kind of simplify it down. Does that make sense? So we, this, we have to add their ages, but they're each 8 years older, so we end up adding, actually adding 16 because there's two of them. Does that make sense? There's some interesting, an interesting problem. We haven't seen anything quite like that before. Number 12 should be really quick. Represent the sum of x and y on your paper. Number 12. Sum of x and y. Number 14, the product of r and s. Number 14, the product of r and s. Number 15, the quotient, excuse me, number 16. Number 16, represent the sum of 5 times d and 2 times c. The sum of 5 times d and 2 times c. Number 18, the product of 2 and a plus b. The product of 2 and a plus b. Number 20, represent the sum of 5 times a and 3 times the square root of x. Represent the sum of 5 times a and 3 times the square root of x. Number 22, 6 times the square of m subtracted from the product of m and n. 6 times the square of m subtracted from the product of m and n. And the last one, the product of a, b, and a minus c. The product of a, b, and A minus C. All right. I think the bell's going to ring in just a moment. Stay with me while I give you the answers here. Number 12 should be pretty easy at X plus Y. Number 14, R, S. You could have had a raised out of parentheses. Don't bother. Just run them together. Number 15, P divided by Q would be P over Q. Number, see, that's 15, sorry. You didn't do that one. 16, represent the sum of 5 times D and 2 times C. Could you put these in parentheses? You could, you don't need to. They're already grouped as a term separately, so 5D plus 2C will suffice. Number 18, represent the product of 2 and A plus B. And we'll just run the 2 and the a plus b together. Number 20, the sum of 5 times a and 3 times the square of x. For number 22, represent 6 times the square of m subtracted from, remember the from has to come first, the product of m and n. How many had this one on 22? Okay, a couple of you, good. And the number 24 represent the product of A, B, and A minus C. We'll group this as one and run all three things together. Anyone get all of those correct, 12 through 24? All right, how many of you just missed one? All right, which ones what? Which ones were they? Oh, okay, all right. Maddie? You didn't have the from coming first. All right, for homework this evening, we need you to go ahead and do the odd problems. For homework this evening, do the odd problems on the handout. We'll take a look at that tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day.